First and foremost, we're gonna start off by saying, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Kaha Law, Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shai, by Shim Rakakadash. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, and Yahweh Shai is the name of His Son, our Lord and our Savior. We are the nation of Yahshua, the chosen people of Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shai. And that consists of the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans of today. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Shalom to the sincere I can push this truth in sincerity. And Shalom to the sincere Agua who listen. Alright? The Lord will just be edifying to the elect of Yahshua. Allah. And we're just going to go on the fly through the Spirit. Now, normally I try to get a precept together, but we're just going to go through the Spirit. Gonna cut straight to straight to the chase all right jeremiah 30 and 7 it says alas for that day is great so that none is like it it is even the time of jacob's trouble but he shall be saved out of it okay and uh yeah let me start at verse 4 all right it says uh Verse 4. I'm at verse 5. It says, For thus saith the Lord, We have heard the voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. And that's the times that we're coming into. We're coming into the time of Jacob's trouble. And we know Jacob is the forefather uh, uh, of uh, Jacob is the forefather of the Israelites. Alright? Jacob's name later changed to Israel. Alright. Now we can read it, that time of trouble in the book of Daniel, the twelfth chapter. book of Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1 it says and at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people how y'all doing it says and there shall be a time of trouble such as never since there was a nation even to that same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered every one that shall be found written in the book all right so we read those two precepts concerning Jacob's trouble, which we're about to come into, all right? And I previously made a video concerning a dream that I had uh, of Jacob's trouble. And, and within that dream, Yahweh Shimei Shah put the spirit on me to uh, pretty much deliver uh, my family members, my relatives within this incarnation, okay? So we read in those two precepts that it's gonna be a time of trouble but we also read that there's going to be salvation. There's going to be deliverance. Okay. And uh, I want to touch. I want to touch up on that deliverance real quick. Because we know as of now, pertaining to Job nine and twenty four, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is it? All right. So right now, the wicked are in rulership right now. All right, and we know that presented uh, to the book of Proverbs, the 29th chapter, and the second verse, it says, "When the uh, when the wicked are in rulership, the people mourn. All right, but the, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice." Okay. So the wicked Esau Edom, which is the forefather of the so-called white race of today, the they are in rulership, and they are the border of wickedness. Let me get that in Malachi. Uh, I believe it's Malachi 1 and 4, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it says, Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down. They shall call them the border of wickedness, 
and the people against whom the Lord, which is Yahweh, the Heavenly Father's name, hath ended nation forever. Yahweh Shai do not like these Edomites, all right? Yahweh, I'm gonna say that again. Yahweh Shai do not like the Edomites, and they are the wicked, and they bear rule right now. And their kingdom is about to fall. And with that being said, they're going to come for, for Jacob, all right? Which is the so-called black Hispanic Americans of the day. And we can read that in the book of Revelation 12 and 12. My Bible falling apart. <clears throat> Got to refurbish the sword. Uh, Revelation 12 and 12, I called it. It says... Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. That's talking to the Israelites. It says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And if you look at all the things that's going on around the world, Esau, Edom, know that he got a short time. Inflation is rising. Food shortages is becoming more evident. Uh, the, the morale of the people that are here, you know, is decaying. Well, it's been decaying, all right? But but the uh, the wickedness of the people here in this wicked kingdom is, is beginning to show forth, all right? And, uh, uh, let me get that. Let me get that. Because he know that he had for a short time. Here in the Apocrypha, uh, for brothers who don't have one yet, that's what the uh, uh, Apocrypha is, all right? Second Edger 6 and 7. And it's going to go into history. And it's also going to tell you the latter end of this kingdom, all right? It says, Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followed? So when's going to be the end of this rulership right here? This age. And the beginning of it that followed, which is our rulership, all right? Reigning with our Lord, Yahweh Shai, when he returns. Verse 8, it says, And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. So we know that we are about to obtain rulership next all right and lord willing it be sooner than later lord will oh and another thing i wanted to get because i was going into the morale the, the morale of the people here are decaying okay and that's why you have uh, those uh mass shootings going on okay it says here in the book of ecclesiastes the 10th chapter it says a wise judge will instruct his people and the government of a prudent man is well ordered as the judge of the people is himself so are his officers and what manner of man the ruler of the city is such are all they that dwell therein and we just read that the wicked bears rule their rulership so the people are going to uh, perform wicked acts it says um and, and there's another scripture going into, uh, I want to roughly paraphrase it, but I, I believe I got it. Uh, it says, the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the uh, but the ways of the wicked seduces him. Some, something along those lines. Pretty much the wicked, Esau, Edom, they uh, make it easy, accessible to go out and do wickedness. It says, verse 3, it says, an unwise king destroys his people. But through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. Verse 4. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. So we know that the return of our Lord, Yahushai, that's going to be a profitable judge, a profitable king, all right? The king of righteousness. And we're going to rule the planet earth in righteousness. Let me go to verse 8. It says, Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, 
and riches gotten by the got by the sea, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. And that's exactly how Esau Edom got this rulership. By uh unrighteous dealings, alright? Injuries and riches got by the sea. Okay? That's exactly how Esau came into power. And because of that, he's gonna lose that power. Let's go to uh that that made me think about numbers the book of numbers um i want to say 35 and 33 if i'm not mistaken defileth the land and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein but by the blood of him that sheddeth it so this whole land this whole continent all right and, and various places where they went to on, on their their journey uh, of discovery okay you can't discover a place where there's somebody's already there okay you just took it over you know or you conquered it so you can't put the word discover there so it says, So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of, of, of him that sheddeth it. Defile not therefore the land which ye shall inhabit, wherein I dwell, for the Lord dwelleth among the children of Israel. And this whole continent of Babylon the Great, which is known as America of today, is defiled by the blood of the saints the israelites all right whether it be when they came over here and took this land from gad uh let me let me look at the respective tribes uh they took this land from gad which is the so-called native americans and reuben the seminole indians and we also know the uh parts of south america uh issachar uh i believe zebulon you know asher you know, Nephitelli, you know, Esau, Edom, whether it be by Esau, Edom coming and conquering, conquering the Americas or bringing, uh, bringing the Southern Kingdom here in slavery and, and shedding that blood here, okay? Either way it go, Esau, Edom has shed the blood of the saints, all right? So this land is defiled and it cannot be cleansed but by the blood of him that shed it. So that's why we read here in Isaiah. Brothers know where I'm going. Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14 and 21. It says, Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and the, and the remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. So the Lord is coming specifically for Esau, Edom, all right, and his seed line. That's why it goes into nephew, uh, it goes into remnant, it goes into all the, uh, the males, all right, you want to cut off a nation, all right, and start at the seed line. Because if you just leave the women, the women are not going to repopulate that uh, that particular nation because the man carries the seed. And it's written that Esau Edom is going to be wiped out. Here in the book of Obadiah, Obadiah 1 and 10. Actually, let me read verse 1 so, so we know who it's being addressed to, all right? It says, The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God, concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. This place, America, is about to be destroyed, all right? Obadiah 1 and 10. 
for thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. That's talking, that's addressed to the Edomites, all right? Which is a self-proclaimed white man of today, all right? Whether they call themselves American, uh, European, Russian, Ukrainian, uh, Czechoslovakian, it don't matter what they want to call themselves today. They are the Edomites. It says, um, verse 18, And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. They shall, uh, and they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. And that's prophecy that Esau Edom is going to be cut off. The only nation that's going to be cut off when it's all said and done. The other heathen nations, they're going to serve captivity for a thousand years. And they're going to go into their respective lands, all right? But Esau Edom, he's going to be cut off. So this, this man has a short time to rule. And he's only been ruling for a short time. And we can read that in the book of 2 Peter, 2 Peter 3 and 6. It says, Whereby the world that was then, that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. And we know that in the ancient days, Noah uh, was Noah and his family was the only ones that were saved from that flood. Like in today's time, the Lord is about to bring that second death, which is by way of fire by the thermonuclear missiles and the chariots coming back. It says, uh, verse 7, But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So this place right here, this atmosphere, this very present time that we're living in right now is reserved unto fire. And we're waiting on the return of our Lord Yahweh Shah. Verse 8, it says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So technically, the Lord has only been gone for two days, or two days and some change. And we've only been in captivity for half a day. So when the Lord returns, he's coming back to bring judgment. And it's going to be fresh on his mind. Verse 9. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward. Let me read it again. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Lord, he died for the sins of the nation of Israel. But two thirds of our nation, they're not gonna receive it. They're not gonna return. They're not gonna really wanna uh, seek, the, seek the face of Yahweh Shem Shai until all these calamities come to pass. And then it's gonna be too late. It says, as some men count slackness. So some men, they're pretty much, they, they, they lost the faith. Or, or, or whether, or they either lost the faith or they do not believe. Here in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, um, verse 14, it says, Woe unto you, which means destruction unto you, that have lost patience. And what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? Let me read that again. It says, Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? Because we got to remember that our Lord, Yahweh Shai, he's coming back with a reward. He's coming back to reward all men on the earth. But let's read how he's going to reward every man. Then I'll jump back in that second Peter's again. Revelations 22 and I'll start at verse 11. It says, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, 
let him be holy still. Verse 12, here's the point. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. So you could be either doing righteousness or you could be doing wickedness, all right? And the Lord is going to reward you when he returns. So it says, woe unto you who have lost patience. It says, what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? <laughs> I ain't trying to find out the conclusion of that matter, okay? Uh, that made me think about another precept I was reading last night. Uh, was that uh, Hebrews 10? Yeah. In Hebrews 10, uh, you have need of patience. <laughs> Hebrews 10 and 36, uh, it says, it says, for ye have no, for ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. We know that when our Lord returns, he's going to establish that second covenant. And that second covenant is going to bring immortality to the nation of Israel. Starting with the first fruits of salvation, which is the elect. It says, verse 37, For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Who is that talking about? He that will come will come. Let's talk about our Lord, Yahweh Shai. He's coming. It says, verse 38, it says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. So if you draw back, if you come into this truth, and you draw back into the world, you're drawing back into perdition, which is destruction, right? Because you know everything that's about to come to pass. It says, uh, to finish it out, verse 39, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Now we're trying to get saved out of here, all right? We are not trying to sit here and dwell in Babylon the Great. As we see this place collapsing, we are not trying to build a foundation here, and this place is about to fall. So let me get to uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11 concerning the elect. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. The Lord knows how he's going to save his very elect. When the Lord told his disciples, which we take it in today's time, that a famine is coming, the Lord also knew that he was going to deliver his, his servants food in that time of famine. When the Lord said calamity was coming, he knew how he was going to deliver his, his elect in the time of calamity. Actually, that being said, let me get Isaiah real quick. Isaiah uh, 65 and 13. It says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. And I pray we be a part of that hopeful elect. Because we don't want to see the other side of the Lord. We want to see his mercy, his salvation, all right? His deliverance. We don't want to see the opposite side of the Lord. Because there's no man here on the earth. It don't matter how much money they got or, or how much uh, uh, so-called uh, status they got in this world. It's not going to save them in that time. Nobody's going to save you from the hands of the Lord. Not even yourself. 
It says, uh, let me get that in Hebrews. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. I don't even got to get it because I just quoted. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. The Lord can do anything to you, all right? Um, let me uh, see if I can find that. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 39, it says, See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver you, deliver out of my hand. Nobody's gonna deliver you out of the hands of Yahweh by Shimei Shai. That's why, that's why we fear him, all right? And Lord willing, we be saved. Let's go to the book of Psalms. Uh, I think Psalms 37. Let me read this real quick. Mm. Psalms 37 and 38 It says But the transgressors Shall be destroyed together The end of the wicked Shall be cut off We just read that Esau Edom Once, that, once the time ruling is up It's a wrap All right, And the, the, uh, the nation of Israel Is going to rule forever with our Lord Yahweh Starting with our Lord Yahweh Shai. Because that's who's returning to the earth. And they're going to call it so called UFOs, but it's going to be the Lord and the heavenly angels coming to take uh, uh, power from these all these rulers on this earth. Psalms 37 and 38. It says, But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off, but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And we're about to come into the time of Jacob's trouble. And along with that, it's going to bring the hour of temptation. Where the enemy Esau Edom, he's going to force that uh, that Revelation 13, 16 down, on, uh, down to 18. On, on all the people of the earth you're not going to be able to buy or sell matter of fact i'm gonna bring that out um but let me read that psalm 37 39 uh 38 on down again it says but the transgressors all right how do you transgress or how do you sin it's by not following the commandments of yahweh now shot it says, but the transgressors shall be destroyed together, and the end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Proverbs 18 and 10. For the name of the Lord. And we know the Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh, and the Lord's name is Yahweh Shai. For the name of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Now, uh, before I end this, I wanted to go into the hour of temptation, <clears throat> which is going to come about uh, in Jacob's trouble, where they're going to force uh, 
they're gonna force Revelation 13, 16 on down to 18 upon all the earth, all right? That's gonna try all the earth. It don't matter if you're here in Babylon the Great, America. It don't matter if you're uh, across the waters in the UK. It's gonna come upon all the earth, all right? Because the people that's in power, the wicked, is the ones that you don't see, all right? The ones that we do see that we call the uh, the king of Babylon, he's just a puppet, all right? Or he's just a, he's just a face, all right? So Revelation, uh, Thirteen and sixteen, it says, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. And uh, uh, going into that number uh, of that man, which is Esau Edom, go look at the logo of the world, uh, the World Economic Forum. All right, and you're gonna see between the two O's, you got a line going through it. And you'll see what it reads. Okay. So Esau Edom rules the earth. And he's gonna cause everybody to take a, a RFID, micro CHIP, read between the lines, all right? That's the MOTB. And we are instructed not to take it. Um, pertaining to uh, Revelation 14 and nine. No, Revelation 14 and 10. All right, how's it going, brother? All right, so let me read Revelation 3. I believe it's 3. Yeah, Revelation 3 and 10. And I'll end it on this. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, talking to the elect, red letter, this is Yahweh Shai speaking, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. All right? So, Lord will, this is edifying to the elect of the nation of Yashala, which consists of the so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans of today. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Shalom, your sister Akim, pushing this truth in sincerity. Shalom to sister Akwa. Shalom.